Can you use an object to tell what a character is feeling? Can an object stand for an idea or someone who isn't there? Can an audience track how a character changes just through an object? And how can this help our storytelling? Hi, I'm Jonathan Stokes, and this is Raising the Stakes, videos about story. Let's get into it. Your high school English teacher told you to show, don't tell. Instead of forcing your characters to simply announce how they feel, I miss you. So much. The best storytellers look for ways to show. Okay. Okay. Let's say you have a character who has never lost their virginity, and you want to show their character growth throughout the story. Once the integrity of the box gets compromised, this is original packaging, and that's why these things are so valuable. Steve Carell refusing to break the seal on his childhood action figures is an excellent metaphor for virginity. But the toys are also a visual way to track character growth, as when Carell hides them before a date. At the end of the movie, having completed his transition to adulthood, Steve Carell's character has finally parted with his toys. How the pay for Dude sells his toys and makes like a half a million dollars. All right, so you can track character growth with an objective correlative, but let's say you need to track an abstract idea like a promise. In Bruce Lee's first major movie, The Big Boss, he wears a jade amulet to signify the oath of nonviolence he swore to his mother. For all of Act One, despite a million injustices, Bruce refuses to fight until this happens. Now, he can finally go full Bruce Lee on these guys. We'll come back to another famous movie necklace in a second. So we've seen objective correlatives track character growth and track abstract ideas, but they can also track characters who aren't there. Let's say a movie sets up shoes as metonyms for people. Now watch how impactfully this can pay off. Audiences get this. Ellie is the chair. The Ferrari is Cameron's father. The house is Jenny's father. Okay, let's come back to another famous necklace. No, not the Great Gatsby necklace. A necklace that really represents who the character is. No, not that objective correlative. A necklace that sums up the character's relationship with her love interest. I don't want you to get too excited. It's only on loan. Oh, right, because Julia Roberts is herself alone and shouldn't get attached. No, I was thinking of a gem that really represents the heart. No, not El Corazon. There we go. The heart of the ocean from Titanic. Notice how it's shaped like a heart, but icy dark blue. In James Cameron's screenplay, Rose describes it as overwhelming, cold, a heart of ice. Almost like she's describing an iceberg? But her feelings change toward the necklace when she uses it as an act of rebellion against Cal. Jack, I want you to draw me like one of your French girls. The necklace is now a symbol of her own choices, her own heart. At the end of the movie, an elderly Rose returns her heart to the sea and appears to die and her metaphorical heart returns to the Titanic to be reunited with Jack. This may be a bit ontologically ambitious, but $2 billion in box office can't be wrong. So if you need to track a character who isn't there, He's dead, Baymax. or track a particularly tricky plot point, or even a character's dream, you can turn to your handy friend, the objective correlative. And if you forget about the objective correlative, come back and visit this video, which will be an objective correlative for the objective correlative. And again, 
Always remember, show, don't tell. <laughs>